Lee Strobel is a reporter for the Chicago Tribune. He's also a devout atheist. And he was given the assignment to report on the struggles of an impoverished inner city family during the weeks before Christmas. So he interviewed the Delgado family, and his life was never the same. What he discovered was nothing but surprising. It was the attitude of this family that had nothing. There was 60-year-old Perfecta and her two granddaughters, and they had just been moved from their roach-infested apartment due to a fire, and they were now living in a tiny two-room apartment on the west side of Chicago. Strobel writes of walking into a pretty much empty apartment. No furniture or rugs, just a small kitchen table and a few handfuls of rice. The two girls both each had one dress and one sweater. The grandmother's arthritis kept her from having a full-time job. In spite of it all, they told the reporter that Jesus had not abandoned them. Even I almost cried. Their faith was strong. They were so good. Remember, you know, when you were, uh, because doing Father the Jones has not turned Here's one his thing. microphone off yet. You know how Jesus if someone would tell Father Jesus Jones to turn his microphone off, and there is no place for him to be born. You tell him his boss will continue you know, said, to do the homily. You know, there is a census, and, and he might give him a town. paycheck. It's almost like there's a big football game in town. The challenges of Christmas. Never dull. Now remember, you never realize some of the stories when priests forget to turn that microphone off in the confessional or whatever. But we're talking about the Delgado family, and we're talking about Lee Strobel, who had to interview them in the weeks before Christmas. And there was an, a, an empty apartment, just a kitchen table, some rice. Each girl had one dress, one sweater. But what Perfecto said to Lee Strobel was, we're not unhappy. She said, Jesus has not abandoned us. And Strobel wrote in his article, he said, I never sensed despair or self-pity, just a gentle feeling of peace and hope. So he wrote the story. But after the story, he continued to wrestle with the irony of that situation. A family that had nothing, but they had faith. And they seemed happy. And he wrote, I had everything I needed materially, but lacked faith. And inside, I felt as empty and barren as their apartment. So he did something that he had never done before. He went back to visit the Delgados after the article was published. He was amazed at what he saw. Readers of the article, of course, responded in an overwhelming fashion, and they filled the apartment with all kinds of furniture and appliances. There was a Christmas tree. There were many wrapped presents. But it wasn't the gifts that shocked Strobel, an atheist in the midst of Christmas generosity. It was the family's response to these gifts. His words were these. As surprised as I was by this outpouring, I was even more astonished by what my visit was interrupting. Perfecta and her granddaughters were getting ready to give away much of their newfound wealth. When I asked Perfecta why, she replied in halting English. She said, the people who live in around me in this apartment are still in need. We cannot have plenty while they have nothing. This is what Jesus would want us to do. The reporter was blown away. And at that moment, he admitted he wanted to know this Jesus. He went on to say this. He said, they had peace despite poverty, 
while I had anxiety despite plenty. He said, they knew the joy of generosity while I only knew the loneliness of ambition. They looked heavenward for hope while I only looked out for myself. They experienced the wonder of the spiritual while I was shackled to the shallowness of the material. And something made me long for what they had. Or more accurately, he said, for the one they knew. Lee Strobel longed for the one this poor family knew. The one that we come together this evening to celebrate, the one whose drama was just played here in front of all of us. So here we are again, this Christmas of 2010. We come together in the midst of a troubled economy, lots of unemployment, the threats of terrorism, New York City today, the threat of terrorism, a never-ending war in Afghanistan. And in the midst of all the darkness that we see around us, we once again gather around the light, the light that this darkness will never extinguish. And this light is not something that's only bright this Christmas evening, this one night of the year, but it's meant to be set deeply in our hearts and fill each one of us with the same peace that the Delgado family has. A peace that in the midst of harsh realities is solid. The light of Christmas, it calls us out of ourselves no matter what situation we find ourselves in. It calls us to come together in the giving spirit. You see, Christmas is all about appreciating what we have and the willingness to share so that others may have what they need. Christmas is all about having peace in spite of the struggles that we all might be going through. Christmas is about knowing the joy of generosity that will solve the loneliness of our ambitious lives. Christmas is about not just looking out for ourselves, but being a source of hope for one another. Christmas is all about experiencing something far beyond the shallowness of the material. You all know Charles Dickens. That great writer tried to teach this lesson to us in the classic A Christmas Carol with the well-known character of Scrooge. If you know Dickens, he had one real goal as a novelist. He wanted his novels to be parables that would emphasize the teachings of Christ. With Scrooge's conversion from selfishness to selflessness, Dickens gives us the Christmas message. You see, Scrooge represents all of us who are seeking to find out what makes life meaningful. Scrooge asks the same question that we all ask. How does one find salvation? The Delgado family gives us the answer. Last year, Walt Disney Records gave us a new version of A Christmas Carol. The music was written by Alan Silvestri, who wrote the music for The Polar Express. Andrea Bocelli sings a new piece entitled, God Bless Us Everyone. Here are some of the lyrics. Come together, one and all, in the giving spirit. Gifts abound great and small, joyously we feel it. Blessings sent from above guide us on our way. We raise our voice as we rejoice, bow our head and pray. A miracle has just begun. God bless everyone. 
To the voices no one hears, we have come to find you with your laughter and your tears, goodness, hope, and virtue. Father, mother, son, daughter, each a treasure be. One candle's light dispels the night. Now our eyes can see. Lee Strobel is no longer an atheist. He has recently published a book entitled A Case for Christmas. And he published and wrote this book because he said they had peace despite poverty, while I had anxiety despite plenty. They knew the joy of generosity, while I only knew the loneliness of ambition. They looked heavenward for hope, while I only looked out for myself. They experienced the wonder of the spiritual, while I was shackled to the shallowness of the material. And something made me long for what they had. May all of us this Christmas of 2010 long for what the Delgado family has this Christmas. Come together, one and all, in the giving spirit. Gifts abound here, great and small. Joyously we feel it. Blessings sent us from above. Guide us on our way. We raise our voice as we rejoice. Bow our head and pray. A miracle has just begun. God bless us, everyone. To the voices no one hears, we have come to find you. With your laughter and your tears, goodness, hope, and virtue, father, mother, daughter, son, each a treasure be. One a candle's light dispels the night, now our eyes can see. Burning brighter than the sun, God bless us, everyone. A miracle has just begun, God bless us, everyone. a treasure be one a candle's light dispels the night now our eyes can see burning brighter than the sun 